Okay, let's have a look at question five. So question five is dealing with trigon uh, trigonometry. So 5.1 says simplify without the use of a calculator uh, the following to one trigonometric ratio. Okay, then they've given you sine of 140 times sine of 360 minus x cos of 50 um, times tan of negative x. Okay, so I've given you the class diagram and your two graphs over here. So let's do this. Sine of 140 is produced when we have sine of 180 minus 40 okay times sine 360 minus x okay and how do we get cos of 50 well that is just cos of 90 minus 50 okay and then times tan negative x so if we look at our cos diagram quickly if we say sine of 180 minus Okay, we're back into that quadrant over there, which means sine is positive. Therefore, uh, if we have 180 minus 40, which means we have this angle here, so that's 40. So therefore, this just becomes sine of 40 degrees. Okay, times, now, th sine 360 minus x. So we go to 360, which is up here. We minus x, so we're moving down. So therefore, you can see that this is making it negative. Okay, so we're going to end up with negative sine of x okay why because cos is only positive there now if we sort out the bottom here cos of 90 minus 50 okay so uh 90 minus 50 means we're going this way now we know that the rule is if we have cos of 90 minus an angle it changes to sine uh, of the outcome so 90 minus 50 gives me 40 so i end up with sine of 40 at the bottom here Okay, and then what are we left with? Tan, if we substitute negative x, we're just going to get negative tan of x. Okay, also note here, with sine of 140, okay, let's say it's sitting around about there. Okay, if you take it across, this value here will be sine of 40. Okay, so they are equal. And you can see that sine is positive at 140, so that all makes sense there. Okay, now if we simplify that out, uh, we can see that this and this is going to cancel. Then we're going to have negative over negative, so it's going to become positive. So we're going to have sine of x all over. Now tan can be rewritten as the ratio of sine over x. So sine of x over cos of x. And then we know from our rules of fractions, this and that's going to cancel out. So we're just left with cos of x as your final answer. Okay, now 5.2 asks you, to prove the following identity. So we have negative 2 sine squared x plus cos x plus 1 all over 1 minus cos of 150, or one, uh, sorry, 540 minus x. Okay, uh, equals to 2 cos x minus 1. So notice that we have a sine squared here and at the top here we look somewhat like a um, quadratic formula. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to change the sine of x to a cos of x and then we can see if we can maybe factorize something here. Okay, and then also note that 540, so 540 equals to 360 plus 180. Okay, so therefore we'll be in the second quadrant, we're minusing x, so therefore cos of 540 minus x is just going to become negative cos of x. Okay, so I'm going to start with the left hand side. Left hand side equals to, let's change sine of x squared into something of cos of x squared. So from your identity, you know that we get the following 2, 1 minus cos squared x. Okay, that's just from sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, okay, and then we have plus cos of x plus 1, and then that's all equal to 1 minus minus cos of x, okay, all right, so good start to this over here, now I can substitute the negative 2 in here and into the negative uh, cos, so we're going to end up with negative 2 plus 2 cos squared x, plus cos of x plus 1 all over 1 plus cos of x. Okay, so now if we look at the following over here, we can see negative 2 plus 1, so that's going to cancel and we're just going to get 
negative one. So if we sort out everything here, we eventually going we're just going to get the following. So we're gonna have two cos and let me just move that up. Two cos squared x, okay, then plus cos of x minus one all over one plus cos of x over there. Okay, so you can see up here we've got a, a polynomial which we can factorize, okay, to the power of two. Uh, let's see, we've got negative one over here and we've got a two in front there. So our um, factors are going to be negative one and one. Okay, so therefore we're going to have two cos of x uh, minus one. Then we're going to have cos of x plus one all over one plus cos of x. Okay, now the key thing is, because 1 and cos are positive here, and cos and 1 is positive here, it doesn't matter which way you write them, okay? So therefore we can see that this one and that one's going to cancel, and we're just going to get 2 cos of x minus 1, which equals right hand side. Okay, so not too difficult in that one over there. Just okay, so now let's look at the last question. It says, given that sine of 36 equals to square root 1 minus p squared without the use of a calculator calculate the following 5.3.1 tan of 36 okay so this is actually quite a nice question but nb if you see something like this very important we need to draw okay so we know that 36 is in the first quadrant okay so we're going to have that then we know that sine is equal to opposite so y over r okay so he has y there's r and there's x so therefore we can find the the part of the triangle we're looking for now because it's just this we know that r must equal one we know that y needs to equal to the square root of one minus p squared so therefore we can solve for x okay and if we solve for x we've got to use the pythagorean theorem so we're going to have one squared equals to one minus p squared squared plus x okay so therefore if we simplify this we're just going to have the square root of one ah sorry this should be that squared over there okay so we're just going to have one plus the square root of one plus p squared squared uh equals to x okay and therefore sorry that's not plus that should be minus and then if you simplify all that out we're going to end up with just p yeah, and that equals to x. So 1 when we square root we drop that over there. So we'll have 1 minus 1 Okay, uh, and then we are going to end up with p squared and if we square root p squared we just get p. So x equals P so now if we're looking for tan tan of 36 we know that the tan ratio is equal to y over x Which is just going to be the square root of 1 minus p squared all over p then they are asking for cos of 108 aha okay so how do we get cos of 108 well we know that cos of 108 let's see 5.3.2 so cos 108 we know that's going to be in our second quadrant over here we know that cos is positive which means we can find this angle of here because this would be 108 Okay, so therefore 108, 180 minus 108 is going to give us uh, cos of 72. Aha, so we're going to have minus cos of 180 minus 108, sorry, not the minus yet, which then produces minus cos of 72. And what do we know about this? Well, we know that 72 equals 2 times 36. Aha, we need 36 because we have those ratios. So therefore, we're going to end up with minus cos of 2 times 72, okay? And therefore, if we use our ratio, or our, not ratio, sorry, our identities, okay? We know that cos of this over here, okay, so we have 2 times x, essentially, or 2 times an angle, so technically we have cos of 2x, two two okay? And we know that that can be changed to the following identities. We're going to have negative uh, 2 cos squared of 
Um, sorry, that should be 36. Sorry, my brain's a bit fried after my test week. Okay, 36 and then minus 1. Okay, so 72 is 2 times 36. Therefore, we can change it to this identity over here. Okay, we then know what um, cos of 36 is. So we're going to then have negative 2 times cos of 36 is then going to just give us, uh, let's see, uh, that's going to be x over r, so that's just going to be p over 1, okay, and that whole thing is squared, minus 1, so we're going to end up with negative 2p squared minus 1, ah, sorry, plus 1, that should be, yes, a plus, because when you distribute the negative in, okay, and that's how we then go not there, there. Okay, once you distribute the negative in, then you'll get a plus one, yeah. Okay, and that's how we go about doing this question. Okay, if you found today's video helpful, then please leave a thumbs up on the video. It does help me out a lot. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. I'll get back to them as soon as I can. If you are enjoying the content, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. And remember, it's never too late to have an OIC moment.